Hello, everybody, everybody, everybody. So now I am going to tell you about the anaphora speech. Um, this speech will be the next one due, and I will post it with all the other videos that I've made already so that you can see what this is all about. Uh, this speech is really simple, but yet it is sophisticated. First, let me say that this speech is three minutes to three and a half minutes long, okay? The anaphora that you remember, right? What time is it? It's tie time. Yeah, you wanted to say it four to five times. In this case, you're gonna have an anaphora phrase as well. You're going to say your anaphora phrase four to five times. And again, the anaphora is like the chorus of the song. You're going to say it multiple times, and it should be the part that you emphasize and have the most emotion to it. It should also be catchy, and also should, it should also be unique. Here's an exercise that I would like you to do. All right, so in this exercise, you have, I have a dream. The I have a dream is the anaphora that Martin Luther King used in his, guess what? I have a dream speech. Now his speech and the video that I'd like you to see is about 17 to 22 minutes long. Am I gonna police whether you see this or not? No, but I would recommend that you do because it's of course one of the greatest speeches of all time that has brought our nation together. So I have a dream, okay? Why do I say this? I do not want you to have an anaphora phrase that is a copy of somebody else. So that means avoid stuff like practice makes perfect. Uh, that avoids uh, saying, just taking a quote from somebody else in general. Avoid one that is cliche, right? The cup is half empty or the cup is, is half full. I don't wanna hear that. Um, four times. And you're going to notice that in the workbook for unit three, I just skipped all the, I'm skipping all the way down, by the way. Uh, so what you have to look at now is in chapter three, just go to the last page of it, where it says unit three, anaphora speech sample outline. I'm about to give you a sample speech right now using that outline. So you just follow along with that outline and you'll be ready to make this speech as well. What you should do is come up with an anaphora phrase that is catchy. Now catchy could mean anything that you want it to mean, as in it could be funny, it could be sad, it can be morbid, it could be marvelous, it could be scary, but I just mean catchy as in it's not too literal, okay? So I wanna have you avoid the word I in your anaphora phrase, okay? Uh, Martin Luther King has I have a dream, I don't want you to use I have a dream or any type of I. I want to hear something different, okay? An example that I have would be the following. I hate snakes. Instead of saying I hate snakes, I might say something different. So let me give you an example of an I have a I hate snakes anaphora speech because this is the exercise I would like you to start practicing uh, later for that, okay? I hate snakes. They're slithery, they're slithery and they're slimy. I hate snakes. I'm always afraid of being bit. I hate snakes. Uh, when they get close to me, I get, I get all goosebumps and gibberish. I hate snakes. If I had to live with one or look at one every day, I, uh, I would be really unhappy. Okay. But I mean, it doesn't really catch my attention or I'm sure it doesn't really catch yours whenever I just say, I hate snakes. Uh, it's just very uh, direct already. I'd rather you create one and I'd like you to create one that has some sort of a mystery element to it. Like a, hmm, what does he mean by that? So rather than say, I hate snakes, I might say the following. Get that green away from me. I have a terrible fear of snakes. So I just reversed it, right? I told you what the topic is, which is I have a fear of snakes, but I just have the attention grabber um, anaphora so you don't know what it is at first, right? Get that green away from me. 
Whenever I see a snake, I just get so scared. Get that green away from me. I know it could be any color, but just anything that reminds me of a snake scares me. Get that green away from me. They're so slippery and slimy that I don't want nothing to do with it. Get that green away from me. If I had to see a snake every single day, I would be truly, truly, truly unhappy. So here's the exercise I like you to do. I have a dream and make it up for yourself. So here you go. I have a dream that one day my entire apartment here will be green. I have a dream that when my apartment is completely green, I can make the wonderful, wonderful green screen for all of you to admire and appreciate. I have a dream that soon this microphone will be all green as well so that this stand won't show in my videos. I have a dream that I will complete making the most wonderful home studio headquarters apartment industry in the world. I have a dream. Try that exercise in. And essentially, if you do that, congratulations, you have yourself the anaphora speech that I like you to do for the speech battle three. You have an anaphora phrase, right? Because you got to pick a topic that you care about. And that's the hard part. And that's why I asked you to uh, come into my outline over here, uh, where, by the way, good news, you can download this um, PDF now, and then you can have, have page numbers on it. Uh, but for purposes of right now, I, I'm just going down all the pages, right? So I want you to be aware of that. So my anaphora phrase is, every grandma deserves a legacy. Uh, for this one, we're going to add a couple of new elements in. I would like you to incorporate a quote. and a statistic. So same thing, right? We have the attention grabber. We're gonna have the unforgettable ending. Uh, of course, you keep with the triple rhyme, triple duration and dramatic pause. You're gonna add in a quote and a statistic. And then of course, now you're added in, not added in, but I really want you to focus on the anaphora phrase more. So each and every speech we're incorporating in more elements. It's gotta become more natural, just like you're juggling eight different objects now, but because you knew how to juggle seven and six and five and four, it becomes a lot more smooth and it just becomes like magical skill here. So follow my outline along and then you'll see. Now, the goal is to say your nap for four to five times, right? And you wanna aim for a speech that is about three minutes. So clearly the I have a dream version of what I said or the get that green away from me was not three minutes. How do I make it three minutes? Well, simple. I just have to develop each part longer so that it becomes that way. So I'll give you an example right now. And I promise I will make another video where this is better, but this is gonna be okay for me to show you a sample of, because I do want you to get working on these anaphora speeches. Uh, today is Wednesday. Um, next week is Wednesday, that's seven days. So you get about 10 days uh, to, to pump this one out. Uh, enough days to do that, okay? So here we go. Every grandma deserves a legacy, right? Now start with an attention grabber. And again, I don't want you to start with uh, questions anymore. I like you to start this time, as I mentioned, um, with a either a triple synonym hopefully you can read that, or a triple antonym. So I'll do that. So please watch these videos. Otherwise, you're not going to know as much as this has been mentioned before. But um, I'll just tell you now, because I actually might want you to watch this video first, actually. So I'll say, hey, watch this video first. Um, okay. So triple synonym. You just pick three words that are the same. Like, for example, Harsh, mean, critical. That's triple synonym. Another one might be frigid, cold, freezing. That would be another one. Now, triple antonym is I just want you to have pairs of opposite words together, like hot, cold, night, day, left, right. Uh, those are different ways that you can start your speech. So I'll give you an example right now. Okay, and I'm just going to um, start the speech right now with a triple antonym, for instance. Day or night, sick or healthy, young or older, 
my grandma was always there for me. Every grandma deserves a legacy. Okay. Now I might change it up this time and I'll do triple synonym. Loving, caring, nurturing. That's my grandmother. Every grandma deserves a legacy. So you can use a triple synonym or use a triple antonym, and then you're going to start your speech. So right away, you're just going to launch into the first time you're going to say you're an Afra. So it's going to be an easy hook and everyone's going to know exactly what it's going to be. Okay. This speech is the speech that you will be remembered for uh, because this speech, you can talk about anything you want. So ideally you should talk about something important to you. Now it doesn't have to be about a loved one. Like in this case, I was talking about my grandmother, but even if it is, you can talk about it in a funny way, in any style in which you want. I'm just going to give you an example now to work with. So I'm going to have the timer here so you can see exactly how long I'm talking about each one so that it ends up being roughly three minutes. Okay, so here we go. Happy or sad, five or 15, unruly or obedient, my grandmother always loved me unconditionally. That's why I'm telling you, every grandma deserves a legacy. There's a quote by Louisa May Alcott, a female abolitionist in the 1860s, that said a house cannot become a home until a grandma is in it. And I feel the same way growing up. Because without my grandmother, I would never have memories of childhood being home. It would have just been something much colder and unfamiliar. Okay, so that's uh, 39 seconds. That's like the first stanza. So here we go with the next one. I guess you're telling a story of sorts, right? See, my sister didn't have the privilege of having my grandmother raise her. So when my parents went to work all the time, because she's older, she went from babysitter to babysitter to babysitter to babysitter. For me, however, my grandmother was here for me from Taiwan. And when I grew up, I just had a grandma at home just waiting to love me and take care of me. And I'll never forget that for all the time that I had with her for 21 years. She was my best friend and roommate. That's why every grandmother deserves a legacy. Did you know that 400,000 immigrants take the US citizenship test every single year? But most of them take it because they want like a better life opportunity for getting a job to make more money. My grandmother, why did she take it at the age of 93? She told me that she did because she wanted to be a citizen of the country in which she fell in love with me. My grandmother came from Taiwan to raise me after her husband, my grandfather, who I never met, passed away. And at the time, she was just 73 already, but she took on a whole new responsibility of literally raising me until she passed away at age 94. And that's why she wanted to become a citizen, to show me that her love for this country, her love for me, went above anything else. Every grandmother deserves a legacy. Okay, so here I am now at two minutes and seven seconds. I can tell you that even though it's awkward, it is not a crime to rhyme. But over time, if you forget about those who loved you because they passed away or moved away or they're far away, maybe that is more of one. Because even though my grandmother passed away in 2005, man, her memory still sticks with me 15 years later. And the reason I'm giving this speech now in terms of the exigence is because my grandmother actually passed away in the month of November. So I always feel a little bit more emotional every time I talk to talk about them to you. Every grandmother deserves a legacy. In the Zodiac, my grandmother was a year of the pig. So that's why I'm wearing my tie now with pretty pink pigs. And I have my socks with also pretty pink pigs. Because growing up, I would always buy her pigs to put by her bed as stuffed animals to let her know, Grandma, I'm always there for you. Every grandmother deserves a legacy. Okay, three minutes. That is why I want to start a foundation.
called the Cute Grandma Foundation and where kids can do public speaking contest and whoever wins will win scholarship money from me to be able to visit their grandparents who may be far away in a different country or in a different state. The reason I care so much about public speaking and teaching all of you is because without my love for my grandmother, I would have never known the importance of speech and what it really means to bring people together. Although my grandmother has passed away, your loved ones are still here. And if I can do anything about it, I want you to have the best public speaking skills so that you can cherish that lifetime with them because every grandmother deserves a legacy. 354. Now I did have some explaining that I did and this is my first time doing it. So it's a bit rough, but you know what? Why not? We'll change it to a three and a half to four minute speech. I had set it at three because during class time we have to get it all in, right? But now that we are asynchronous, it's okay. You can get that extra 30 seconds in there, okay? So what did I do here? My alliteration was pretty pink pigs. My rhyme was time, crime, and rhyme. Uh, my dramatic pause was, and that is why I am starting up a foundation for my cute grandmother so that people could have scholarships to meet their grandparents from far away, right? I had my anaphora phrase where I said four to five times. Uh, my attention grabber was the triple synonym or antonym, I forget which one, but I should have ended with one or the other. So again, my attention grabber could have been uh, loving, caring, nurturing, that's my grandmother. And in the end, I could say, because in the end, every grandma deserves a legacy, whether young or old, cheery or sorrowful, oh, this is terrible, uh, triple, an triple antonym, and I got to get one of these. Um, because in the end, every grandmother uh, deserves a legacy, whether they raised you or not, loved pizza or hot dogs, or smiled or was always grouchy. Okay, so there you go. Um, that is the anaphora speech, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there's a lot more that goes into this in terms of preparation and whatnot, and I'm going to go over that in a, another video, but for now, right, I'm going to actually go through unit three, um, go through all this, because um, it's hard to just come up with a topic. There's a whole way for you to come up with a topic. There's a lot of um, process to do, but I just wanted to make this video now so you know what you're going to do for your next speech in about 10 days from now, okay? Pick a topic that you're passionate about. You can make it any style you want. Um, it doesn't have to be serious. It could be funny, uh, whatever the case might be. Um, so I'll just give you one quick sample now um, that came up in one of the classes that I was teaching. Uh, so and the topic is sunscreen. Uh, you probably don't see that right now. Okay, sunscreen. Okay, this is sunscreen. Okay, um, so sunscreen, you can make it serious or you can make it funny. I'll give you an example of that, just like I could have made my grandma's speech uh, funnier if I wanted to, or even sadder or whatnot, okay? So there's this brand of uh, sunscreen called Super Goop, okay? And I'm gonna try to make this one a, a bit more animated, okay? So just follow along with the anaphora. I'm not gonna do the whole literary device thing, but just go along with me here. Super Goop, what a weird name for any type of product. Well, it's sunscreen. Super goop? That's like me feeling like I'm putting some weird uh, bottle of something onto my face and I have to rub it. I hate wearing sunscreen. Super goop? Supposedly it's like a really good sunscreen that's gonna protect you from the rays of the sun, but come on, like, you know, just wear a hat or something. Super goop? It costs like $15 for like a four ounce bottle. I, I hate wasting money on sunscreen. Okay, so that one was just more, uh, you know, being playful about sunscreen. 
But now I want to tell you a sub, uh, something more serious about it. Okay, so here we go. And I'll notice how I'm going to change my voice about it. Supergoop. The name might sound funny, but it would have made such a big difference for these two young kids. Supergoop. When I was in Tibet on a spiritual journey, I went up into a mountain and the sun was just completely beaming on this younger sister and brother's face. The girl could not have been more than seven and this brother could not have been more of four. They really needed sunscreen. Super goop. I know it's a funny name, but it would have prevented something from not happening. I tell you, their faces were so burnt. It's like you're burning sausages and you burnt pancakes and you burnt French toast. And they're just so young and that skin damage is beyond repair already because there was nothing protecting them from the sun that was beating down on the flat top of that mountain uh, their entire lives. Super goop. I didn't have any of that. I wish I did, but I had a hat and I just started crying uncontrollably. I threw it out the window and I was just sad that I didn't have another hat because I have 20 hats at home that I could have given them to try to mitigate some of the sun damage that was already seemingly permanently irreversible for them at such a young age. Super goop. Sunscreen and sun cancer, skin cancer is serious. So if you're not going to use it, at least take care of yourself. Because I know there's people like those two young kids who are now grown up now, because I met them in 2005, 2006. Super goop. Okay. So again, this one, I changed my style a bit, um, but it's still important. Um, I, I do feel both ways about sunscreen and super goop but I just wanted to give you an example of how just because you're talking about a certain topic doesn't mean it has to be talked about in a certain way. Um, you know, you could talk seriously about someone, you could joke about someone, same thing with any type of topic. Okay. So I want you to think about this and apply the five canons of rhetoric, right? What style do you want your um, anaphora speech to be in? Okay. Um, and we're and really go from there. So that's it. That's the anaphora speech. You got 10 days to uh, come up with all this type of good stuff. And in the next couple of days, I will go through unit three with a tutorial of how you end up with your anaphora speech. But for now, I just wanted to let you know what this is all about. So you can start thinking about it, start working on it. And now you have the speaking exercises to take your speech to the next level. Well, thank you, everybody. It's uh, 1149 p.m. I'm going to go check up on the election a little bit. I got to upload these videos, but it's been fun for me and let's make it fun for you.